Today I'm going to show you exactly how to make this adorable door hanger. I'm going to take you through the entire process and I'm also going to share with you a few of my favorite tricks about creating the check pattern in a circle. Sometimes round objects need a border and I like to do this in a checkered pattern but this can prove challenging. So let me take you step by step into how I do this. I use a bowl that will fit slightly inside. You need about an inch to two inches around the outside. And here I'm using a chalk pencil to draw around my kitchen bowl and it leaves the perfect border. Now let me show you how to add checks. Using painter's tape, I mark my circle just as if I'm looking at the face of a clock. I mark it at the 12, six, three, and nine. That leaves you with four sections. Then you just need to divide each section evenly. It doesn't matter if you put two more pieces of tape or three more pieces of tape in each section, as long as you do the same thing to the four sections that are left. This will, this will keep you from ending up with two black checks next to each other or two white checks next to each other. And trust me, I've done it many times before I figured out this simple process. Once you have it taped, it's time to use a clear coat to seal each side of your tape. This will keep your white or your contrasting color from seeping underneath the tape and leaving you with uneven edges. Once your clear coat is dry, you can begin adding your contrasting color for the second check, which here I'm using Fluff and Dixie Belle, and I'm using a very small quarter inch brush just to paint on each stripe individually. There you go, it's all painted and we're ready to begin removing the tape. I don't even wait until my tape is, my paint is dry. I just begin removing my tape as soon as I'm through painting around the circle. And as you can see, every single stripe is very, very crisp. And this is because we used that clear coat before we put down the white. Okay, now we're moving on into our color that we'll be adding in the center. I'm using Plum Crazy here. It's one of my favorite pinks from Dixie Belle, and I will be applying this with a small, again, quarter inch brush just to get around that detail around the edge. We'll fill in with a larger brush here in a minute, but I always use a smaller brush to do the fine detail. Now I'm bringing it in with the flat medium brush brushing up against what I've already painted, moving in a circular motion just to clear in that center. Now I knew that on this piece I wanted like a glowy middle, so I usually do that with the Gulf, or I also sometimes will use a lime green as well. So I'm just filling in the center section here with the Gulf right up next to the Plum Crazy. All right, now that I've got both colors on, I want to reactivate my Plum Crazy. So I'm going back with a brush and adding a small amount of Plum Crazy around the green because I want both paints to be wet so that I can begin the blending process. And to do that, I'm using my Best Dang Wax brush. It is a miracle brush for blending. You can see here that I'm just circling the colors together in a circular motion. They sort of marry the colors and make it look very cloudy in that area. It sort of blurs out that hard edge. And in the end, I'll have a very, very glowing finish. All right, now it's time to add some transfers. I'm using the Flowered Child transfer along with the Cotton and Eucalyptus. I love combining transfers, pulling some of my favorite aspects from each one. It's super easy, just rub it on, peel back the backing, burnish it with a soft piece of sandpaper, rub it on nice and good, and it is ready to go. We're adding some hand lettering now. I'm using my chalk pencil to spell out the word hello. I know this looks really difficult. I actually offer a course on this, um, hand lettering, kind of walk you through step by step how to draw and write out words that you can add depth and dimension to. And I've got it all drawn out here and I'm just filling in with a small artist brush using fluff paint to fill in the letters. This technique is actually a lot easier than it looks. I will add the link in my description where you can find this hand lettering course. And that is it. Look at that, look how pretty it is. And it was so easy, super affordable. I think I paid $7 for the board. Um, just a little bit of paint, a transfer or two, and you've got a great project. And the transfers themselves will actually probably, oh my goodness, you could probably make 
10 boards out of one transfer. So it's a super affordable project. It's a lot of fun to do this with some children in the family, maybe your mom, your sister, your best friend. I hope you've enjoyed this um, and follow along for more tips and tricks from Tracy's Fancy.